Hello, my name is Tyler Jones. I'm the product manager for Fisher Engineering. In today's tech talk, it's going to focus on snow and ice control with half ton trucks. Let's start off by looking at the different classifications. The DOT has eight classes, and those are based on gross vehicle weight rating, or GVWR. Class 2 happens to be broken up into two segments Class 2A and 2B. Half ton trucks happen to be class 2A and three quarter ton trucks are 2B. As you can see, there is a pretty uh, distinct difference between the weight ratings between those two classes. The gross vehicle weight rating essentially establishes the vehicle weight plus occupants and equipment that are appropriate for that vehicle. This ultimately contributes to the payload capacity, and that's an important uh, area to talk about with half-ton trucks. Remember the weight ratings were different on uh, the three-quarter tons, but that doesn't directly translate into payload. So let's look at the text in red. The GVWR of a vehicle is 7,050 pounds, hypothetically while the truck's curb weight is 4,500 pounds. What that means is that the load capacity or payload capacity would be 2,550 pounds. Now that's the amount of weight that's available on that vehicle for occupants and equipment such as snow plows and spreaders. Now, needless to say, we'll address the, the upfront fact that half tons do offer less payload than three-quarter tons. Uh, approximately 3,500 pounds on a common three-quarter ton versus 2,000 pounds on a common half ton. If you look at the chart in the upper right hand, I've selected uh, a few uh, representations of half ton trucks, fairly late model half ton trucks. And uh, with the associated engine equipment what the available payload is to give you an idea of what type of half ton payloads are available but to really make the point that it can vary drastically from one make uh, but even one model within the same make referencing uh, the 2018 Ford F-150 with a calculated payload of 3,270 pounds versus the 2018 Toyota Tundra shown with uh, 1,730 pound payload capacity. So what this means is if you intend to configure a truck for snow and ice control, um, whether it's uh, just a plow or a plow and a spreader, you're going to want to pay close attention to what uh, GVWR and what the curb weight is of the vehicle that you're shopping for. And you can find that information right in the door jam. There is a tag uh, that has that certified data from the manufacturer. You'll find uh, when you walk onto a car lot, uh, most of the half ton trucks that they're uh, in their inventory will take a plow. Um, most manufacturers have their plow line segmented fairly well, so they have a light duty plow that pretty much goes on everything. Um, but there are limitations with uh, the, some of the light duty plows. So uh, for instance, if you selected a vehicle that had a better payload capacity, like the 2019 Chevrolet with 2,500 pounds, um, now you could be looking at few plows um, or heavier duty straight blades than otherwise. Really, things have changed um, as of late, and quite significantly with half-ton trucks um, and their ability to equip snow and ice control equipment. Um, one of the most remarkable uh, things I'll, I'll highlight is that as of 2021, um, Ram, Ford, and GM will all offer a plow prep option on their half-ton trucks. Uh, GM has done this for some time. Ford joining that uh, group a little bit later and Ram, the last 
to offer a plow prep halftime coming in 2021. Another significant change with halftime trucks uh, these days are the engines that are being offered. Um, oftentimes you're seeing inventory of truck lots be more V6 and even four cylinder engines than the larger V8s. Uh, it's, it's really uh, interesting to see how well those um, smaller engines have taken on and one of the advantages of the smaller engines is that it does leave more capacity for uh, equipment. Uh, that is, the engine weighs less, it is um, contributing to less of the curb weight of the vehicle and thus leaving more payload capacity for equipment. Um, this new technology is especially remarkable because of the amount of torque and power that they're able to generate with these power plants. Um, not, are, not only are they, I would say, um, as powerful, some are more powerful, but not only are they as powerful as V8 alternatives, but they tend to put up much better uh, fuel efficiency for than, uh, than larger V8s. And this, these smaller engines are not available in the larger three-quarter ton trucks. So this does give a half-ton work truck a potential advantage over um, three-quarter ton or HD trucks because of uh, cost to, to own and cost to operate. Now, coupling um, those awesome new engines that we're seeing in the market are uh, new transmission options as well most of which are incorporating additional gears, um, as many as um, commonly 10-speed transmissions are being used. And that's allowing power delivery and drivability, especially of a loaded vehicle, to improve dramatically over uh, yesterday's you know, four-speed and six-speed transmissions. Mated to an eco-diesel, um, no longer is, does uh, a diesel in pursuit of a diesel require you to look at heavy duty uh, trucks where the new eco-diesels eco are available from uh, all of the brands and offer really big torque, power numbers, and exceptional fuel mileage. Um, to take a look at some examples, a uh, Chevy Silverado 2500 HD um, is going to get a combined miles per gallon around 14 whereas the same half-ton Silverado is going to get about three miles better per gallon at 17. Uh, compared to the 2020 Ram half-ton with the Eco Diesel, which is EPA rated at 21 miles per gallon city and 29 miles per gallon highway. Uh, stating some of the obvious here, but uh, it is a pure fact that mile per mile you are likely to get better fuel mileage uh, out of a half ton truck and you know, depending on the type of work you're doing um, and the type of distances you're traveling that can really uh, add up fast especially when looking at a fleet of trucks. Now heavy duty trucks three quarter tons one tons they have uh, substantially improved over the years as far as comfort and drivability. Uh, a lot of the ergonomics that were developed within the half-ton truck segment have um, now found their way into the heavy-duty trucks as well, uh, many of which sharing the same interior uh, between the two. But cabin noise, suspension and comfort and handling all dramatically improved. But there is one point uh, that still uh, has to be made and that is that half-ton trucks still do it better. Um, if you have had an opportunity to drive a um, somewhat like shown in the lower right hand corner, uh, Ram 1500 with a plow for any amount of time and then been able to drive a Ram 2500 with a plow, you'll find that the 1500 is substantially easier to maneuver, handle, operate, 
than the larger trucks. So want to give a nod to the HDs. They've come a tremendous way uh, in the last 20 years, but um, still have to give it to half tons when it comes to drivability and comfort. Now, it isn't really all just about comfort, though. Uh, we're talking about plow trucks. Um, and a lot of the applications where you're using a plow truck tend to be tight spaces. Um, a heavy duty truck by any manufacturer is going to have a taller hood. It's going to make it um, less visible, more difficult to see um, when you're in tight spaces and maneuver that vehicle. Now these trucks are heavier and that uh, simple fact that while the, the GVW is higher, the physical curb weight of the vehicle is heavier. You're driving around something bigger and in uh, especially inclement weather that uh, contributes to you know, more fatigue and, and can slow you down. And lastly, the longer wheelbase found on heavy duty trucks. Um, it can help when it comes to pushing larger snow loads and the half ton trucks really don't compete in that space when uh, measured against an HD, especially with a nine and a half like shown, but the longer wheelbase does uh, decrease the turning radius. So uh, there's a lot of work, as I initially mentioned, that isn't big open spaces where the job requires pushing maximum amounts of snow. A lot of times it's about time, getting in and out, doing um, precise work, and doing it again in the shortest amount of time. Having improved visibility, improved turning radius, and uh, more ultimate control of the vehicle in the space is uh, potentially going to improve the bottom line. So let's talk about value, and this is really interesting to me. Um, I went to cars.com, incredible uh, shopping site for, for vehicles, and I, saw, I searched the 2020 Ford Ranger four-wheel drive, 2020 Ford F-150 four-wheel drive, and 2020 Ford F-250 four-wheel drive. I sorted, uh, I looked across the entire country, and I sorted by the lowest price. And these are the results um, that, I, that, I, that I got, and it's very interesting. A Ford Ranger at $34,000, uh, an F-250 at $33,000, about the same price, and the half-ton F-150 coming in uh, $10,000 less, the lowest priced brand new four-wheel drive in the country at $24,000. So, uh, right there, the bottom line, it gives you an idea about upfront costs. And um, if you're buying multiple vehicles, if you're building a fleet of plow trucks, uh, at a certain point, you're going to um, get a free truck versus the F-250. And you have to ask yourself, is having more plows uh, out on the road, hitting more jobs, is that going to produce more revenue? than uh, fewer larger trucks. In many instances, it will. Um, and what I found shopping around and, and doing research is that an, an HD model truck will tend to be about $6,000 higher than uh, a half time of that same brand. And that's going gas engine to gas engine. It's, it's even greater, uh, of course, when you look at diesel um, HD options. The depreciation uh, in the cost of ownership, you know, is is quite similar uh, between even these three classes of vehicles. You figure the brakes, tires, um, wear items, and maintenance on the vehicles is really about the same. Um, we talked about fuel economy, and while it was different, it wasn't uh, dramatically different. So. Um, I, the, the net result of my research is that value-wise, you're going to get a better value out of a half ton, primarily because of upfront cost and that um, cost of ownership and operation really um, can be comparable between the two. Again, I, I, I took to the web uh, for, for finding data, finding information on this 
on this subject and, and really seeking to find out um, you know what has changed with half ton trucks versus uh, the past and I threw up a quote uh, from a post I found in a chat room and this uh, individual they they talk about uh, their experience plowing with a three-quarter ton uh, or one ton and that they had recently set up a half ton truck V8 equipped with a plow setup. Um, they went out and tried it and were really, you know, displeased with the results. They felt that the truck um, was tossed around by the snow more and that the truck didn't seem to have the same amount of, of power. Um, he's ultimately looking for feedback from other half ton users. And as I read through that thread and kind of gathered more information, what I had suspected. Um, really proved to be true. <clears throat> See, it, it was common in the past in the case here where the half-ton truck that was set up, um, it, it wasn't equipped with a half-ton plow, and, and that kind of makes the point of this particular slide. See, that truck had a 8-foot HD Fisher plow on it, a perfect plow for a three-quarter ton or one ton where the uh, axle weight ratings and um, ultimately the the capacity to take that plow are much better on a, an HD truck and you put that same uh, plow onto a half ton truck and it's going to tend to over uh, overbear the truck especially when there is no ballast weight there's a significant amount of ballast weight needed to put a plow like that onto a half-ton truck, in which case you're, you're only further weighting down um, that application. So what I deduced from that thread was that uh, in the past, uh, there weren't necessarily products that were specifically developed for half-ton trucks and scaled for half-ton trucks and really didn't allow the half-ton trucks to perform uh, as designed, and that, uh, that certainly changed. So uh, as I read on, I, I found plenty of accounts for people that had modified uh, half-ton trucks to take larger eight and a half foot B plows um, and were satisfied with the performance, but um, all they had really done was, was configure a three-quarter ton truck. Um, in any event, Within the last uh, 10 years, and especially the last five years, a, a lot's happened in the snow and ice control industry. Um, again, the, the vehicle manufacturers have come forward with plow prep equipped trucks and incentivized um, plow manufacturers to respond with new technology specifically developed for these half ton trucks and allowing them, um, again, the right weight balance it to really maximize their, their agility and performance, um, preserving the vehicle's performance and, and also the service life. So that age-old question again, um, is a half-ton truck any good for plowing? It's been asked plenty of times all over the web. And you know, as you can see in the images, half-ton trucks have uh, deep roots and a long history uh, in snow plowing. What I noticed was many people tried to answer that question this way. If a, if a half ton truck was better than a three quarter ton, and if you ask the question that way, no, I really don't know that a half ton truck is a better total option for snow plowing. Is it any good? Absolutely, and we talked about some of those um, areas that make them good and even areas that make them slightly better than a three-quarter ton. So thank you for your time. I appreciate your interest in this subject, and I'm happy to carry on further dialogue. If you have questions, please email them to me at info at douglasdynamics.com, and please reference half-ton in the subject